I mean, it's like the first time we played with Stevie Wonder, and the first time that, you know, we played with Prince, and the first time that we met all of our rhyming heroes, like from Kane to, you know, to Wu-Tang Clan to, you know, first time we met Tupac to, I mean, there's, there's just, there's so many, it's, it's, it's literally a career, not even a career, but a life full of highs that you really can't approximate which high was better than the other high. So, you know, I always tell people, it's, it's kind of like asking me, what's your favorite breath you ever took? My parents um, were encouraged and encouraged me to find my artistic side, to draw on the walls, to play my food, to beat uh, furniture. I believe that it was their level of getting tired of seeing broken stuff around the house that they finally decided to channel in that energy and got me my first drum kit when I was five. So I'll say Christmas at the age of five, I got my first pair of drums and drumsticks. And then I broke that three days later. I guess, you know, I have a lot of influential records that I wish I was there to just watch the process of. I play a game called Engineer, which is basically, now that technology's advanced, that you don't have to have two-inch real machines inside your presence to listen to records. You can have those uh, stems on Pro Tools, computers. So uh, for my birthday in 2009, someone an anonymously sent me the entire Michael Jackson off the wall uh, Pro Tools, um, which basically enabled me to figure out in some sort of Rubik's Cube way how Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones, and the engineer Bruce Wadian figured out the balance of how to create that record. That off the wall album is to me that's my prized possession like I just sit there for hours just okay I'll put the vocals down just turn up the keyboards and the congas and then I get bored and then I say all right get rid of that let's do the background vocals in the bass you know I do different mixes so um, I often wonder what those sessions were like and for me it, there's an educational process there because what we as music consumers know as Michael Jackson's off the wall that's not what's on these reels like there's a gazillion tracks. There's everything but the kitchen sink. And what I found amazing was that Quincy Jones and Michael Jackson knew exactly what not to use. You know, there's alien sounds, there's percussion, there's all these guitar solos, there's horn sections. So I'm, I'm, I'm more amazed at what they didn't use and what they decided to use. So I'll say that Off the Wall is probably my, my go-to record when I, I imagine how they made records back in the day. The way that the roots started, you, you kind of have to say that it was sort of like a jam session. Like we never had, the roots never had a repertoire. We never had like set songs that we rehearsed in the garage first and then we went to do it at a show. Part of the process of what makes the roots the roots is the fact that we've done so many things in real time spontaneously in front of an audience. So a lot of our early shows was just showing up to street corners or different venues with absolutely no idea of what we were to do. It was just like I would play a drum break, and then next thing you know, the bass line would come, and then the keyboards would come, and then Tariq would freestyle. That's why Tariq is such a great freestyler, because we would have to spend four to five hours every Saturday in that summer of 92 um, talking about people's shirts and the color red and the sign and the cops walking up and, 
you know, the bicycle parked in the corner. Like, we would just have to make songs up in real time on the spot. I'm the flicking kid tagging my name in Carlisle and rust -oleum. Everybody know we am better, they know we are. The S to the TR. Whoops, I forgot to say the A up in the middle. As I groove it just a little and I rap, it's not a riddle. It is the kid you can't forget a better. You could forget me never cause I'm clever. My shit is mad together. I'm rough as leather. You wonder, whoever or who is it yet? It is the one black thought the mad exquisite. A lot of the first root shows were uh, jam sessions, but the idea of the jam sessions that we have now was pretty spectacular because people that who are established now were inside of my house. Imagine coming to a house in which, you know, Jill Scott is the girl that works at retail at a, at a, at a, at a gap like downtown or something, and she wants to come by and sing. Like the the main attraction was that I have free food in my house. I had a five star chef come and make all this free food. So once word spread, like, oh, I can get a grub at Quest House, and then, oh, and there's instruments and microphones. So Jill Scott, before she got a deal, was always in there. Bilal, Music Soul Child, before they were Floetry. Marsha was always there. This group, uh, Kindred Husband Wife Team, they brought by India Irie. Most Def, Kuali, before they got signed. Beanie, Freeway, a lot of those cats. Like, the, the whole Things Fall Apart record, Eve, all those people that were on that record, they were unsigned in the beginning. They were just constantly, for two years, come and, and hone their skills. And that was the woodshed at, in my living room, doing those jam sessions. And now, three years later, all of them got record deals. And it was a magical period. There's people that hear music. There's people that listen to music. And there's people that absorb music. And I like to think that I'm part of the latter. I think that I absorb it. Absorb it in sense of, um, you know, I'm totally immersed in it. Like music to me is more of a, a, a spiritual experience than it is just, you know, meaningless minutia of fodder that you have, you know, you turn on your car and you talk over it. But nah, like I, I actually spend, usually Sundays are the days that I spend five to six hours discover new music. I'll usually like buy a lot of records. People know that I have a very large record collection of about 70,000 records. You can't digest all that in a lifetime, but for those that I choose, um, usually on Sunday is when I pick those 30 or 40 records, sit there for a good five to six hours on Sunday and just see what I can learn from it. You know, some stuff I do it just so I can sample it. Some stuff I do it to see if I can get an idea for another song. Some stuff I do just to make a, a cool mixtape or something, you know. I mean, I, I usually just use Sundays as, that's my spiritual music out. I kind of think that our lifestyle example is more of a testament than any actual recording or album that we put out. And so, you know, I stress to people all the time, it sounds cliche, but no matter what what you want to do in life, you got to have a passion about it. I tell people, like, your dream job is the job that you're willing to wake up at four in the morning for. And that's not to say that, you know, every four in the morning that I wake up, I'm all happy and chipper and, you know, like, ready to jump, you know. Sometimes I don't, but the fact that I do it, that means I have a passion for it. So you got you to gotta wake up to a job that you love. So that's that's goal number one. Goal number two is always be in co constant preparation. Oftentimes I see cats that want to get put on or cats that are even in the game that are more about the accessories of it. Like cats get real mad because I don't take advantage of like all the amenities offered to me. And that's because, you know, that, that stuff comes and goes. Like for me, I mean, the parties are nice, and the girls, and all, and all that stuff, and whatever, like, material things that you see. That stuff is cool, but for me, what's more important is honing a craft. And so, you still have to put 10,000 hours of practice in, even when you're an established professional. You know, if you wonder, like, why your favorite MC always falls off, because, you know, they don't put the same amount of pressure on themselves to keep rhyming and keep expanding their vocabulary once they get put on. They just think, like, oh, life is easy and then starts to wane and then they fall off in six or seven years um, 
So that's what that's all I want to say. I want I want people to know that you have to love it. Something that you're willing to wake up for in the morning for, and something that you're willing to put constant, constant concentration and rehearsal behind.